was a beautiful experience. I remember being so happy that I felt so good because I had been in severe pain and distress. So to be wrapped in blankets of pure love was exactly what I needed at that moment. And then, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just enjoying it at first. And then I, all I know is there's a presence that was next to me. And I don't, like, I didn't look like I look right now. There wasn't like, it's not a presence like, oh, here's your grandfather who's here. It was like a light being. And I'm telepathically talking to this light being. And the, the light being's telling me it's time to come home. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. It's not time to come home. I'm not coming home. I, I've, I got stuff to do. So I start pleading my case to stay. And the being didn't say much from there, but it felt like about three days of me um, pleading to stay. And I'm begging, I'm begging. Finally, the being's like, okay, you can stay. I remember being so excited. Like in, in the spirit world, it's a feeling world. It's not a, like a world like this. So everything is like you feel it like a hundred times. You feel love thousands of times more than you feel this. At that moment, I felt like I closed the biggest sale because I'm a salesperson of my life. <laughs> and I closed it with God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty cool. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm, I'm like in my, because it's a feeling world, in my mind, I'm feeling like I'm just jumping up and down. I'm, you know, celebrating. I'm like, woo, I did it. And then, you know, during my celebration, I get this but. And I remember like, but? But what? Like, uh-uh, no, there's no buts in this. Like, I, uh-uh. But there was a but. And the being said, it's going to be really hard. I um, remember thinking at the time, well, I don't care. It, it can be a hard, it, what's harder than stage four cancer and dying and this and that? Like, it can't be harder than this. So I'm like, I'm going back. I don't care. Next thing I know, this was days of me being up in there pleading, or at least what it felt like days, because it does, time doesn't exist there. So um, after that, all I know is that I'm back in the hospital bed. I'm still sick as a dog. But you know, within a couple days, I started to improve. Oh, now I know bliss, love, and bliss, and the creator of the universe call me by my name. My name is not Donna. It's a name that God knew me as through the millennium. Millennial, however long that is. And I was like, oh. And I was in this space that I never wanted to leave. I was moving through the universe and I'm getting knowledge about this is how this works, this is how this works. And I'm like, this is so cool. And we kind of came to a stop, it felt like. And I hear God say this. So, Donna, what would you like to do here? I never thought I would say this in a million years. So you can say, well, when I die, I'm gonna ask God this. No, it did not happen. So I look at God and I said, well, God, since you made me, I give the choice to you. As soon as that happened, immediately realized what I had just done. I gave away my choice. And some people go, well, no, that was your choice. Your choice was that. No, I said, I, I gave away knowing what was gonna happen next. Okay, God, I give the choice to you. As soon as I realized what I had done and I can't undo it, I did this. Oh, shit. Then I said, oh, I just swore in front of God. And look at God, I go, oh, shit. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it almost left. As I'm waiting for God to answer me, I heard this, and I don't know what being, so I have no idea, but it was like, when you go back, you will tell people how important choice is in their lives. And here's what choice means. It doesn't mean what am I gonna have for dinner. It means every moment of your life, 
You are making choices in your thinking. How you think about people, how you think about the story. Someone tells you something that goes against your belief system and you go, well, I, don't, I don't really believe that even if you don't say it. That's a choice and how precious choice is to human beings. You know, we talk about free will, but this was like more than that. This is like every moment of choice. A lot of times people think if they're sitting in a coffee shop or something and they're, they look over and they see someone and they have thoughts about that. Oh, look at that person, their coat doesn't match their shoes or whatever it is you're thinking. You think just because you don't say it that it doesn't have an impact, but that's not true. There's an energy associated with that. Um, I don't, and I don't know how to explain that. Energy looks so different to me now. So I'm getting this lesson in surrender and choice while I'm waiting, and I kind of feel like I'm like this, and all of a sudden I become unhinged. And I feel like I'm falling back to earth, and I hear this, I swear I hear this. He says, good answer. Because I'm falling back and I hear, good answer. <laughs> and I land inside my body. You know, I snap back in my body and I realize my lungs are full of water. What's going to happen here? What just happened? Um, I could sense other spirits around me. Some of them were moving very quickly past me. <laughs> I think those were people going toward the light. Um, maybe they died quickly. I don't really know. Um, that wasn't very concerning to me. There were people around me that I could tell kind of on my sides, um, maybe behind me, maybe in front of me, just hanging out in that space. And some of them seemed quite content to, to stay there and some of them were slowly moving forward. Um, I wonder now if some of the people that were floating around me that seemed quite content to just be there, if those were like coma patients or what. But um, I understood that there was some, I have some choice in the matter at this point. Someone started speaking to my spirit. It wasn't like I was hearing a voice in my ear. It was like my spirit was resonating with someone else's thoughts. So um, I... I sense this person talking to me. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's like an angel or maybe the Holy Spirit. And they are telling me, it's not really your time to die and uh, you should go back. Um, and I don't wanna go back. I don't wanna go back in this moment. Um, I'm so happy with where I am and I want more, more of God's love. I want to go see him. So it's very difficult for me to hear that I'm supposed to go back. I had sort of forgotten who I was, my, my kind of earth identity. I had to be reminded, you're married, you have a husband and children. And I, I could picture them as I really thought about it. And um, it was okay with me that I might not see my husband again in this life because he's very strong and I know that he, his faith would allow him to be all right without me in this life if I left. But um, the thing that got me to go back was that my children, it was shown to me that my children would be raised by someone else, maybe another woman, that they would not get the same exact experience that they would get as with me as their mother and that I love them very much. I wanted them to turn out a certain way and kind of the traditions that they set up in their lives and their character is being shaped by me. Um, in a very loving, specific way, and that if I did not stay to take care of that um, parenting, that they would not end up exactly how I was hoping that they would, um, and that our relationship would not be as strong, and I really didn't want that. I know I came back for my kids. It was a hard decision, um, but the spirit that was talking to me was proud of me for making that choice. Um, anyway, that was really all I can remember about that. The next thing I remember was waking up and being in this broken body. It was very painful. And then I saw the most magnificent light 
And I went up towards this light. I was completely drawn towards it. I felt loved, surrounded, completely enveloped in the softest, most luminous ball of light. And then there was a figure in front of me, and he addressed me by name. And this is always the part that freaks me the most, is that he knew my name. I'm like, you know my name? Which, of course, seems so silly, but that was my reaction. He said, Andrea. I'm like, oh, yep. And then I was asked, do you want to stay or do you want to go back? And I had three small children. They were one, three, and five at the time. And I said, I have to go back. I said, even if every bone in this body is broken, I must go back. I have to take care of my children. And then he asked me again, do you want to stay or do you want to go? And I said, I must go back. And then I was thrown into, I can only explain it as a vortex of energy. It was like this crazy spinning top. And I could feel myself, I know it's weird because it wasn't my physical body, but it was like my astral body. And it felt like I had a body. And I had my hands up on the sides and my legs up on the sides. And I knew I had to hold on for dear life or somehow this thing was going to throw me out into I don't know where. And I held on and it spun. It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been really, really fast. And bang, I slammed back down into my body. And I woke up. I woke up and I started crying. And my first thought was, please, Lord, don't let me forget this experience. And as they were putting us into the ambulance, I was in the stretcher with the neck thing and the whole deal and my husband the same. And I remember saying to myself, wow, something has gone to a lot of trouble to save me. And to help me know that my life is worth something. And I looked at my husband and I said, okay, this marriage is over. And my new life begins now. And I looked at a life review that expressed just my perspective and other people that I interacted with. And their perspective, their emotions, their feelings, their thoughts, their energies. And the rights, the wrongs, the karma cycles and patterns. That's what my life review was. It was interactions and the choices that I made. The things that I could have done and should have done and would have done differently. And that to me weighed a lot more than the ease and peace and bliss and joy of being where I was. I was attached to the physical world and I had judgments and I sensed my reality on earth. And I looked back and I, I knew what was missing. And I needed to redeem myself because if my soul's purpose was to change, I had to make a decision and an oath to myself that I'm going to change. And this was all intentional, all telepathic. And I was asked again, what do you want to do? And as soon as I knew and Source knew I meant what I was saying, that I made that oath, I was welcomed back. And I left the white light, I left that, that realm, and I entered back into the tunnel and traveled back the same way how I came. And I, I viewed our atmosphere, I entered, and I viewed the hospital I had to go back into, and entering inside of it and then coming into my body. And as soon as that happened, that's when I was unplugged. And minutes later, I woke up. I felt disconnected from source. I felt lost, heavy again in this physical world. And I felt the stress, the pain, the depression, the anxiety, the fears, the doubt, the dwelling on the wrong things, and the things that we tend to complain about. I was this back into the same body, the same mindset, and the same person, and the same characteristics. And with that energy, I felt like I knew and could think or feel what the world, what was going on in the world. I was connected to the world and the thoughts and feelings of the world. So at this white space, I felt like I was connected to all the energy in the world, to 
all the thought, all the feelings, all the beings in the world. And I felt like at that time, it was the beginning of me understanding that we're all connected. At the spot, I was given a choice. It wasn't spoken in English, it was just a choice um, to return back into this body and continue with this physical experience, my spirit having a physical experience in this body, or to go on to another body, you know, and re uh, clear, clear that spirit energy and then choose another body to go into. And I wanted this body. I wanted to pop back into this body. And the moment I thought, no, give me that body back. I was doing fine. I went back through this entire tunnel or tube, back reviewing my life, and ended up back in this body, waking up in the uh, recovery room of the hospital. So as I looked at this planet that we call Earth, I was given a choice to go back. Do you want to go back? The voice said. And I could look at all this anger on our planet, the warring nations, but I also got a chance to see teachers and firemen and policemen and, and neighbors and strangers doing such kind deeds. I also got a chance to see my life ahead. I saw myself speaking to scores of people at lectures. I saw myself writing books. Uh, I saw myself traveling around the world talking about my near-earth experience. I also saw my two-year recovery and I knew the challenges ahead. The psychiatrist and I also saw my attempted suicide. All these things I saw ahead and the voice, do you want to go back? And I said yes. And I remember all around me were these fragments of energy and color and, and I remember being in this sphere of light, if you will, going back and I remember the moment I hit my physical body. I remember that I woke up, apparently I was unconscious for three and a half weeks, and when I woke up, there were Christmas decorations in the hospital. When I went into the hospital on November the 11th, there was nothing. So it was this kind of reality check of, oh my God, this time had lapsed, what happened? But something occurred on the other side, and so many people always say, oh, it's just a dream, or you hallucinated, or so many of these things they say are not real. You and your whole heart know what you saw on the other side. You know what you felt on the other side. Um, and then some really, one thing that's really cool, the, the part that, that I, I just, really cool was I heard a voice. And, and this voice was directed right at me. It, it wasn't someone I heard. It was a voice talking to me. It was very clear. Now, I'm not one that when I praise, you know, God comes and tells me this, you know, clean, do this over here, or do that over there. You, you maybe had preachers or something say that they interact with God back and forth. That's not me. But this voice was directed to me. And, and it said, and I wrote it down so I never forget it. It said, no, not now. You have more work to do. And, and I, I, no. Not now. You've got more work to do. Wow. And then I replied. I responded back to that voice. And I said, I accept. Now, that's not usually the way I talk. I would, if somebody says, no, not now, I'd say, okay. You know, I'd be casual about it. But it was real formal. I accept. You know? and, and, and immediately, immediately after that, I woke up at Mercy in the, in the emergency room. The, the heaven thing was gone. The com discomfort came back. All the chaos returned. You know, the lights and, and all the, the uncomfortable. It was all back. All I had to do was say, I accept. And it was that sort of feeling, like I'm home. And it, was, it felt so familiar and so comfortable. And the other thing that I was, became acutely aware of at some point was... <clears throat> Oh, I've got a choice to make. Mm -hmm. Am I going to stay here or am I going to go back and crawl back in my body or be back in this dimension? And I actually considered that. And I remember being there and considering that and all the things that I took into consideration. But then it was like, no, I'm going to go back 
because it doesn't feel like I'm really finished yet. It doesn't feel like I've done really what I wanted to do in this lifetime. So it's, it's time to go back. And there was no pressure one way or the other. It was just totally um, a choice, being aware of making a choice. And so when I decided to go back, I, I made a, I, I, and there was a condition that I hung on it. And it was like, okay, if I'm going to go back into my body, I'm going to bring this awareness level with me. And I'm going to have that in the body. And if I can't do that, I'm, I, I really question whether I'd want to go back. And when I, when I talk about that, that, um, uh, that awareness, it's, it's like a state of being where you are something more than your body, but, and you're experiencing that on that full level that I was experiencing out that while you're in the body. And that's the, you know, that's. And I honestly can feel the love, like God's love, angels. I feel them behind me, but I knew, and this is the important part. Um, Trying not to get emotional, but um, I knew that like, if I like turned to the light, which was very, very tempting to do. Uh, when I say tempting, it's like more tempting than anything you have ever felt. It was a draw, a pull, because the love was so pure and unconditional and not even love, but it was like your home, your real home. So to not turn and surrender to that all is well loving energy, it was hard. But, and this was my soul journey, obviously, I'm looking at my body and now I'm way up. So my body's actually pretty small at this point. And I'm looking up and because I, what I understand on my spiritual journey now at my age is that we have purpose and when it's not your time, it's not your time. So I'm looking at my body and the weirdest thing was I was repeating over and over and mind you, I'm 11 years old. Okay. And I was looking at my body, not going to turn around, even though I love the energy, my soul knew that my work wasn't done. I was kept keeping a contact with my body, with my physical, I mean, with my eyes, I was looking at my body. And I knew if I turned away from looking at my body, that would be it. I wouldn't be able to resist it. It's not like something's going to snatch me and force me from, it was my own self that wouldn't come back because I knew that was just too much love to resist. So I was staring at my body and I kept saying at 11 years old, I kept saying, I'm not done with them yet. I'm not done with them yet. I'm not done with them yet. So I was talking about my family at 11 years old. I knew that my purpose in their life wasn't over yet. And that was what I was saying over and over and over. And I kept saying it and focusing on my body until I went all the way back into my body, but I had to stay super focused. And I, so it felt very jarring to go from this space back into a very dense physical form. And uh, the visual that I want to give you is like, you ever see like a fish flopping out of water, you know, like it felt like, Oh, like I was so like, Oh God, you know, like out of my element. Cause I went from this, this body and light bodiless spirit to being condensed all my light. So we are not a physical body. We are this immense energy so to go from this immense energy and go whoo, down into a small physical form, um, it was just reminding me of like a fish flopping out of water, like uncomfortable. It was a big, like, you know, like hard. I greatly enjoyed my various conversations with these glorified souls in this place of pure loving wonder and joy. And meanwhile, just in general terms, I was given to know that I had the option to stay there eternally or I could return to my earth suit below and complete the gift of life. This created a dilemma in my mind as the body below was paralyzed and not breathing. In general terms, I was given to know that this situation would resolve over time should and shouldn't really affect my decision process. 
I also, though, wondered what my earthly occupation was supposed to be, as the situation below seemed really implausible for completion of any medical school or practice in medicine. And just again, in general terms, I was given to know that indeed it was my calling to become a physician, and that would come to pass should I choose to return. The other very overbearing issue in my mind was I had never, ever wanted to leave this amazing place of beautiful souls and companionship. And again, I was just given to know that in general terms, I shouldn't be concerned. They would still be there upon my return from the gift of life uh, and wouldn't, I wouldn't be judged either way in my decision. So while there in this heavenly realm, we glorified souls were just in general terms aware of things going on back at earth. Uh, with those that we loved and cared about. So things like sadness or anguish or despair or heartache, they don't exist in this heavenly place. And although I didn't request this, I was given to know the very deep heartache and anguish of my parents, should I choose to stay. And that in general terms, these feelings would overcome uh, over time lessen and become more manageable. So I further contemplated the aspects of a life well lived when I considered that I had never become a physician or a bride or a wife or a mother or a grandma. And, and my heart really longed to learn the many lessons of each of those and the other chapters in the book of life that I would be taught. So after I considered all of those many aspects of that very important decision, I decided I really would love nothing more than to complete the gift of life. And then, Suddenly, and with great authority, an immense voice permeated all things in this heavenly place and said to me directly, return. It's not your time. So what happened next was that more rapidly than the blink of an eye, who, who I am and, and I always will be or my soul traveled back from this place, um, back here to earth, uh, which by contrast has that mix of light and dark. And like sliding into home plate, I slammed most firmly back into my exact assigned earth suit, which had since been moved and transported to a different part of the hospital. So I was now in intensive care. Yeah, so I, I got to choose, right? Not everybody gets to choose. I, I did get to choose. I've since, the, over the time, um, I've been on the endearth.org and read a lot of these because I needed to just to understand. And um I, I was able to choose. I was just, I could not, they would love me the same whether I came back or whether I stayed. They were going to be there when I returned, if I chose to come back, or if I stayed, what a blast. And again, it wasn't like, a, oh, you're going to be, you know, like your body's going to survive, all this kind of, it was just, no, no matter what happens here physically, in the physical world, you're going to be fine. Don't worry. And intuitively, I knew whatever this was telling me this, that it was right. <laughs> I knew that um, that it, it wasn't lying to me, that this was, this was truth being spoken to me and it was coming from a place of love. And then I'll never forget this. I calmed, I kind of embraced that feeling. I understood it, I felt it, I experienced it. And then it asked me, do you want to go? And I remember this so clearly. Um, it was as if a voice came into my head. It wasn't me, and I knew it wasn't me. Um, it wasn't a thought, it was a presence. Um, and it said to me, do you, do you wanna go, or do you wanna stay? Um, that was the, 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 what I remember at least, um, kind of the question. And I just paused, I think, momentarily. And uh, from a place of not being afraid to say the answer, I think I'll go. Um, I actually said, you know what? I don't think I'm done here. I, I want to stay. And with my ego completely removed, my ego completely gone in this situation, you know, not even trying to survive, but just feeling and, and, and soaking in this love and acceptance and acceptance of, you know what? It's okay no matter what I choose. And being given that choice was amazing. And it, said, it asked me that question and I just intuitively knew in that moment that yeah i'm i'm not i'm not done here yet um there's so much more i want to experience you know i just started this relationship with lily which i think can be truly magical i just got to thailand and i, I want to there's so much i want to experience um, i don't think i'm ready to to leave the physical plane so to speak 
it's very natural for me to think of it in terms of, as is often spoken about in these things, a doorway or a threshold, or like, I could, I could go through that doorway. Um, the, the, the notion of choosing to step through that doorway, go into, as they say, the other side, presents itself, first of all, as something that is, uh, requires absolutely no effort in any way whatsoever. It is merely a choice, that is all. There is nothing to it. Mm -hmm. Easier than falling off a log. And, uh, but it's still a very clear choice, actually, in my case. And when faced with the overwhelming beatific piece of uh, being steeped in the divine, it's a reasonable thing to ask, well, why would you want to turn the other direction from that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you go that way? Which is a question that I've, I've enjoyed um, kicking around ever since, actually. That next day, as I pondered that question, what I couldn't explain then, and I don't know that I could do it now either, is simply why there was something in me that felt like, uh, I have that choice. I can go that way as easily as could be. But I think I'm not going to. And the sense of it at the time was, I think I'm not done here. I think there's some things I need to do here. I don't even know what they are. Like, I'm really baffled by that. The, the, the fact that I am feeling that way leads to a whole, I got more questions. Like, all right, fine, what am I, really? I mean, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This, frequently not that amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I. Um, but there were two, energies next to me and they were the ones that were talking to me and I'm sitting here and I'm feeling wonderful and I knew the surgery was happening but I really was didn't care about it you know I could you know in this some distance view here I knew there was a lot of activity going on and at one point I even said wow what's going on down there because it was like furious for for several moments but I'm talking to these people these beings and I'm saying uh, I don't want to go back. And they, they, never judgment, never, you know, they were like, well, they asked me basically why didn't I want to go back? And I was telling my story, why I didn't want to go back. And I said, I, I can't go back, I don't have enough energy, it's too hard, you know, yada yada, all the human things you say, you know. Um, and I remember just feeling very loved and supported and great compassion. And I, I can't say that I had a whole life review, but I had some very significant events in my life come before me. My past marriages, um, some, some of them were things, well, I would say most of them that they were showing me were things that I had wished I had done differently, you know? Um, at least the first view, the first round of, of viewings I got. And they said to me very clearly that this is your choice, Eileen. It didn't have to be this hard. And I was like, wow, that's just like, because that's how I operated. You know, I was this do it all by myself. And, and the theme of my conversations with these beings was very much around the fact that it's always about a choice. If it's not working, choose different. You don't ever have to be afraid and ask for help and support. For me, that was huge because I don't do that well. And they even said, ask us for help and support. You don't even ask us. That's the, you know, and they weren't saying it in a judgmental way, but it was a very loving way about ask for help and support, we're here. The choice can always be different. Now that was my message. Some, some of you that might be important, some of you not, but for me that really was huge, the things that they showed me. And then they said that I had a choice. They said I had a choice of whether I came back or not. Um, and I have to tell you, I, it felt, I know it wasn't an eternity, but it felt like the longest time that I sat there and went, I don't know, I don't know if I wanna come back. Um, and then I started bargaining, and I said, okay, if I come back, you have to promise <laughs> it's going to be easier, it's going to be different, it's going to be better, you know. And I really did, I bargained. 
I mean, I said, I will come back. Because there was a part of, you know, that then they did show me my children. I think that was the clincher, you know? It was like, it wasn't, and again, you have to understand, it's not like uh, any kind of judgment or anything. It's just like full disclosure. Make a decision, but be, be sure you know what you're choosing, you know? So then they showed me my children and some events that were going to be happening in the near future in my children's lives, they, you know, or possibility events, I think is how they said it. And um, after they agreed that my life could be different, even though I knew I was the one choosing it and, and, and making the choices, I just felt like I needed to hear that. I said, okay, I'll come back. No longer, I, those words came out of my consciousness or wherever, because it's not like you're speaking them, but there's just, you know, you're having this conversation. I said, okay, I'll come back. And then there was, again, this swish. And I was, this whole scene was gone. And I uh, uh, assume I was back in my body at that time, though I was out of consciousness. As I was looking down, they were going into the resuscitation, down below, and it actually seemed rather obnoxious. <laughs> I was like, hmm, do I? There was just a sense, a little sense, of do I want to go back? But I loved my children really incredibly. And my little five-month-old daughter was this little redhead, and I'd actually had, prior to her birth, many years before her birth, I'd actually seen that she was going to come into my life. So it was this thing like, oh, I can't leave now. I need to go back. Please, can I please go back to contribute to them? Because if I leave their lives now, they won't turn out to be the individuals and human beings that they could be with me contributing to them. So could I please go back and contribute to them? And I was asking the being, and I never looked to see if there was any physical presence. I just felt this incredible presence, and I didn't... It was like, if you're married to someone, or if you have your child next to you, or if you have your mother next to you, do you really need to look at her? You know who she is. She's, she's her. She's, you don't need to see her. So you to know who she is, and that's just how I felt. So I was looking down and watching this whole thing unfolding down below, and they were doing CPR, and, and um, they brought in an oxygen car. This one woman came in and put an oxygen mask on my face, and I was in an x-ray room, so they weren't prepared for me to die in the x-ray room, so this was very hard for all of them, and there was a lot of panic going on down below with, oh my god. So, um, this, this being was just listening to me, and I was asking to go back. And then the second thing that kind of came to me was I had a purpose I had planned to complete in this life. And I knew it, I knew exactly what I was supposed to do, and I hadn't done it yet. So I said, I haven't completed my purpose. Could I please go back to complete my purpose? I really want to work on that. So again, I continue to say in just really gentle ways and feeling just incredibly accepted and loved and just in the most amazing peace, there was no fear, there was no trauma at all in the situation. It was, it's interesting that a lot of MDEers actually don't want to go back. They don't want to go back. It's, I think, when we talk about home, I look forward to it incredibly. I don't want to commit suicide. I don't want to exit before I'm supposed to. I don't want to hasten my death in any way. But I can't wait to go home. And the peace and the love and the acceptance and the joy that I felt up there on the ceiling was just a small part of what I was going to feel if I got to go all the way. Now, about 80% of the people who have near-death experiences actually have ones like me. They rise above an accident scene, they rise above the trauma to their body, and they don't actually go further than that. But they're given an amazing experience that changes their life, the same as the ones that go beyond and go through the tunnel and meet their deceased 
relatives or friends and have spiritual connections with the people that, that they're meeting up there and be told, you know, you have to go back. You know, I'm not a theologian. Um, this had nothing to do with religion. It had to do with life and love. But the, what I would most like to convey is that although I was asking, you know, immensely profound questions, I thought, um, what I was getting back were I was remembering. It wasn't new information. It was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It was fantastic. And then the light told me that I had to go back. And the light being God to me should have been intimidating. It wasn't. I said no. And God said yes. And Kim said no. <laughs> And it went back and forth like that. And I'm here to tell you, you can argue with God. You know, God's going to win. But there was no problem. You know, there was infinite patience on the part of my creator as I insisted on not going back. But indeed, I was sent back. And then the darndest thing is that um, I missed my body by about six feet. So now I was uh, in the odd predicament of... Um, being in the same position as my physical body, but about six feet away, and going, you know, who's that? I mean, it meant nothing to me. The me that was me didn't even have a name, but it was the truest part of who I am, was no more in that body than looking at a piece of luggage. I appreciated the luggage, it was like, cute purse. I mean, you know, but it wasn't me at all. And when, when I talk to people who are afraid of death or people who have lost a loved one, it, when they, you know, the old saw about that's just a shell, it really is. You know, it, it just was not me at all. I'm, I'm still begging to be with God, not to be sent back. And so God opened up this window-like thing on my right, and there was heaven, at least my heaven. Pure and simple, it was beautiful, very intense, non-earthly colors. Um, I'm sure you could find these colors on earth, but not in the intensity and vividness. And, and there was light in all of it. There were blades of grass and small trees in the distance and this intensely blue sky. And it was all shades of light and love. And it was so beautiful. And so I was told that if I went through that window, though that was my border, there'd be no coming back. So I was out of there. And I, I thought I was all the way through, but not quite, I guess, when, again, God basically said, oh, before you make that decision, let me show you something. And in a flash of light that was an aspect of this light, again, there were, I don't know how to explain it, but there were, um, there was a place, and all I knew is that where mountains melt water. Well, it wasn't Kansas, and I, I didn't choose that. I chose to go through this window. Again, felt like I was just about all the way through. Another aspect of this light flashed, like, you know, the old-fashioned cameras with, you know, I'm old enough where the bulbs would come out, you know, and Everybody would be squinting. No squinting involved, but that bright and focused. And there were just like a gallery of people, like portraits, and they had um, very mundane labels. You know, next door neighbor, best friend, coworker, nothing glamorous. And I was just given to know that if I chose to live, these are people that would have some significance. And again, I did not choose them. I chose heaven. And again almost through the window when another flash and it showed me being of service and I looked and went in my brain kind of like cool I was back I made my choice it was like tricked <laughs> phooey you got me so I consider that I was sent back to serve by God before you is this just magnificent beautiful bright white light you are confronted by true pure love in my case 
since I've talked to other people, I realize that they necessarily did not, uh, were not given a choice. In my case, at that moment, I was aware that I could immediately choose to leave and return to reality or my body. Or I could have the choice of moving forward or desiring to enter into or become part rather emotional uh, become part of this light and the next moments I did desire to become part of this light uh, including considering uh, my life in reality the the, the love that I have for my wife and children, uh, for the people around me, the um, wonderful things that I've been able to do in my life. I've had a really exciting and wonderful life um, prior to this experience. And the wonderful things that I can continue to do, uh, helping the people around me, making love uh, to my children and my wife and uh, close friends and so on. Um, but it was so much more desirable uh, this was perfection this this was heaven or God um, and it is now confusing to me I don't recall making a specific choice I recall desiring to enter this light and I did in fact make a forward motion The return trip was extremely vivid, and it was everything in reverse. Um, the you went back uh, through the tunnel uh, right, and so forth? Right, back through the tunnel and to reality, and upon reaching the, the beginning of the tunnel at the reality point, uh, I woke up or came to or uh, entered my body with a, a, just a huge bang, with a, a jolt similar to an electric shock or just, you know, bang like that 